What's a hair trend that should have never existed? One that I think that should never existed. I don't think that it shouldn't have existed, but I think it shouldn't have. I feel I feel like people overdid it. The mm -hmm. the coil array um braids. Oh, like, <laughs> I definitely I like had it. those. <laughs> I liked it. I thought they were cute. But uh -huh. I just feel like people just overdid it. I'm like, all right, <laughs> everybody looks the same. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of the Grow It and Keep It podcast. My name is Shayna and I am the founder and CEO of Baskin Lather Co. And today is a very special episode because we have one of our customers here. Her name is Ravi and she has suffered with alopecia and she's here to tell you her story. Hi everyone, I'm Ravi. Thank you for having me. I'm very grateful and honored to be here. All right, let's get right into it. So Ravi, tell us, when did you start using Baskin Lather products and how did you find us? I started using it last year. I saw it through um, one of a influencer, her name is Tokyo Vanity. I was experiencing my first bald spot and I was like very stressed out. Uh, my hair just kept falling out. I didn't know what was going on. So I started going to the dermatologist. Then she started me on the injections and then I saw Baskin Lather. And once I clicked on the website, like I just kept getting more and more ads and like <laughs> more and more social media posts and seeing like all the, the posts mm -hmm. and the testimonials on the page like really made me curious to see like what it's all about mm -hmm. so I just I ordered my first um, scalp stimulator and then I've been using it ever since so it's been a year and some change awesome and um, could you tell us so in addition to this you started with the scalp stimulator have you added on any other products since no, I actually haven't. Amazing, just a scalp stimulator. <laughs> I've been using just a scalp stimulator and it's been working wonders on my hair. So mm -hmm. I've just stuck to it. You know, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty much a one product kind of person. Mm -hmm. Once I see something that works, like I just stick to it. So I have a, another question. So you said that you saw the Baskin Lather on, on Tokyo's page and then mm -hmm. you were getting hit with like advertising <laughs> and different posts. What was the final thing that made you say, all right, I'm going to try this and trust it in my hair? Um, I do a lot of research and mm -hmm. so I was just looking on the page and like looking at the testimonials. I'm like, oh, this can't be true. And then as I kept like scrolling and looking and looking and looking, I'm like, okay. And then I started seeing what the ingredients were. So I was like, okay, let me just try this out. Mm -hmm. And I used it um, and I started seeing like instant growth. You know, everything is a process, obviously. Like my hair did not grow like, you know, in, in two seconds or mm -hmm. in one week or so. But I've been dealing with alopecia areata for about a year and some change. And I do see a lot of the growth. I know it may not look like I have alopecia areata because my hair, mm -hmm. I have a lot of hair and it covers a lot of it. But like even with the length, like mm -hmm. my hair was not this long last year um, and has definitely grown so much not just my my ball spots but also like in length I love to hear that and for those of you that don't know um, <laughs> prior to founding Baskin Lather I was practicing as a board certified nurse practitioner so for those of you that don't know alopecia comes in many different forms and alopecia areata is one of them alopecia areata can affect anyone um, we have babies uh, that have had it after mm -hmm. having COVID um, who have also used our products all the way up through adulthood. And this is a type of alopecia where your immune system is attacking your hair follicles and it'll shock them and make the hair fall out. And typically the people who are affected with this type of alopecia have big um, patches. They kind of yep. can resemble the earth. And some triggers of this could be medication, it could be stress, it could be a recent illness. Um, and it's pretty devastating because it comes on abruptly, right? Mm -hmm. And then you just have these big patches of bald hair in your head and you just you really don't know where it came from yeah definitely um i think for me when it started i've always dealt with like stress but i've never lost my hair until last year it was about january when i saw my first bald spots and i was in the middle of studying for this very important exam um, i'm a social worker i was studying for my lmsw exam mm -hmm. 
and it was a very stressful time. And then when I saw the ball spot, like I just got more stressed because I'm like, where's my hair? Like, why is this happening to me? This never happened to me before. And I've always been known for like having such, you know, beautiful, long, luscious hair. And then when that happened to me, it was kind of like a big shock and it just kept growing and growing the ball spots where like I literally like had like half of my head left. And I just did like constant styles to protect my hair and to cover the ball spots and then I just eventually just started embracing it and no, trusting that God will grow it back and he will fully restore it so yeah. yeah and then I have a question so when this first happened did you tell anyone about it or did you kind of keep it to yourself at first at the first month I didn't tell anyone about it because I figured it would just grow back but the second month I started seeing like it grow and then I just started seeing more and more ball spots um, like growing like right next to each other and then just connecting eventually so that's when I started telling my friends and I just started telling like my community about it and I started telling the people like pray for me girl because I don't know what's happening <laughs> then everyone started giving me opinions about what I should do and telling me oh try this try that try mm -hmm. this so I went through like this phase where I was just trying anything and everything until I saw Baskin Lather and I, I just said you know what let me just try this out and I'm just gonna use it and see if it works mm -hmm. at first when I started Baskin Lather I was using other products in conjunction to it mm -hmm. and then I eventually just stop the other products and I said let me just use this by itself and see what happens so then when I saw the growth I said okay so at first it, my ball spots weren't growing in mm -hmm. but my hair was growing mm -hmm. so I said okay if it's growing the hair that I already have mm -hmm. <laughs> then it'll grow the ball spots eventually and then it did yeah so sometimes with alopecia areata since your immune system is attacking the follicles um so that's why like the dermatologist will recommend steroids because those steroids stop it mm -hmm. suppresses that immune response so it'll stop attacking the follicles so sometimes what'll happen is you'll and this could be for anything right it could be someone with shedding breakage typically you'll see that what's going on stops or slows down and then you see the growth yeah and then also like so with your story right i resonate a lot so i didn't suffer with alopecia but a few months before starting the company, I had a really, really bad case of COVID in 2020. Um, I was working in the office as a nurse practitioner and then I got deployed to work at the hospital. Came really, really sick with COVID, recovered thankfully. And then weeks later, my hair started to shed and break so bad and it felt like a Brillo pad, like the texture changed, everything about my hair changed. I was so embarrassed, I didn't tell anyone. Um, I would go to the salon, I was trying emergency treatments and anything that I could find for my hair, nothing was really working. So then I remember just probably about four to five years before that, my younger sister had lost all of her hair and was completely bald. She had a crop circle, really bad case of ringworm that got misdiagnosed. She lost all of her hair. My mom had created our scalp stimulator oil, which had no name, right? It was just whipped up in the kitchen. And then our hair elixir to help thicken her hair. And I said, all right, let me try these two oils consistently. I don't know what's going on with my hair. My PCP doesn't know, mm -hmm. you know. Then my hair reverted back like almost instantaneously. Within a matter of weeks, my hair had stopped shedding and it was growing back nice and thick and full. And at that time, I actually, because I had lost so much hair, also decided to go natural for the first time in my life. And it was just amazing. And that's really what led to starting the company. But it's really hurtful and embarrassing as a young mm. woman to be losing your hair, nobody knows why, and then it just happens like this, right. right? So I definitely resonate a lot with that. So after your experience, so you already told us about um, how, how long it took you to see results, some things you've tried before, and then what made you decide to continue to use the products because you saw some results. And now, is it something that you have recommended to friends and family? Yes, I actually have. Um, people ask me all the time. Back when I was telling my friends about my ball spots and I was just posting it on my social media, on my close friends. So not everybody knew, mm -hmm. just like people who were really close to me. And then I started like making videos on my close friends about like how I would do my hair treatments. Mm -hmm. And so I was not just using the oil, but I was making like some type of hair mask with mm -hmm. the oil um, for my hair. And people would ask me, oh, what are you using? So then I would just tell them, oh, I'm using Baskin Lather. I'll send them the, the Instagram. I'll send them the, the link. Oh, this is the exact the product. And then that's how it just happened. And it kind of became like a walking billboard for <laughs> Baskin Lather without even like <laughs> noticing or... Well, I love to hear it because I feel that uh, hair loss, especially, especially when you're, you're younger, right? 
um, and it's not expected is something that people just don't talk about and a lot of people will suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times too, what we try to do is make a safe space, a safe community where people feel open and they know they can even reach out to us if you don't, they don't want to comment or they don't want to speak to us on live, they can DM us and really let us know what's going on because there is always something out there. There is a solution and some people will just suffer, right? Yeah. A lot of people get to the point where they've tried three or four different things, nothing worked, and now they're just stuck with these bald spots and a worsening condition forever. And sometimes seeing is believing. And I think that um, when we're stuck in this a situation where there's something that goes wrong, mm -hmm. I think we kind of get used to it, and then we just learn how to live with it. Versus um, when you find the solution, and I just think that you know, as people, like we're just impatient by nature, and that we look for in instant gratification. So I think that when there is a process, like your hair is a journey, mm -hmm. especially when you suffer from alopecia or alopecia areata, or like even breakage and the rest of the things that go on with hair. It's always a, a process and like anything, it takes time. And I think for me, it just took patience, like to see, you know, it was very upsetting for the first months where I wasn't seeing any progress in my hair. Like my hair, was growing but my boss spots were not filling in and that was very disappointing for me mm -hmm. because I'm like yo I'm literally doing everything I can so mm -hmm. my hair could grow and it's like embarrassing I'm trying to cover my hair my bald spots and then you know you sort of are suffering in silence mm -hmm. and when I started sharing about my story with alopecia areata on my close friends I started to realize more and more women, not just women, but men too, um, are suffering with the same things. Like even with um, women who who give birth and they have said, oh, I, I, I have experienced thinning and everyone has a story. So I think that just the testimonials about your hair, about what you use, like it could really help someone. I strongly, strongly agree. So sometimes being vulnerable, there may be nothing that you could do to kind of backtrack your own mm -hmm. situation, but it could help others. That way they don't have to suffer as long as you did before you found a solution. So um, what were your thoughts when we asked you to come on to the podcast? <laughs> Honestly, I was surprised. Um, I never been on a podcast before mm -hmm. and so this is my first and I'm excited and nervous a little bit. <laughs> um, I never expected to start a product and then see the result, get invited to, you know, basically share my hair journey with the world pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just very honored, honestly. Aww. <laughs> All right. So, Ravi, when did you first discover that you had alopecia and how did it make you feel in the moment? I first discovered that I had alopecia um, at the dermatologist. In January, um, I had my first bald spot and I went to the dermatologist because I saw that I was getting um, larger and the dermatologist told me that it was alopecia areata. And then in February, I started to get more spots. Um, like beside the original spot mm -hmm. and um, I didn't understand what alopecia areata was mm -hmm. um, and then the I started googling it and you know when you google things like you you start seeing all these horrible things so mm -hmm. I just got, got really nervous really stressed out and my hair started falling out even more wow so when you uh, initially um, got the diagnosis, could you tell everyone what was the process like? Did they have to do any specific testing where you had to wait for the results? Or was the dermatologist able to just look at the pattern of the hair loss and tell you what it was? So it was very difficult because the dermatologist, she couldn't really give me an answer as to why my hair was falling out. That I think kind of stressed me out more. But she had me do a blood test to see if I had any like hormonal imbalances mm -hmm. or um, any other things that were underlying health concerns that might be causing the the hair to fall out. But then we found out that you know I didn't have I was healthy. Mm -hmm. You know I didn't have anything. I never really had any health concerns, mm -hmm. any health conditions. So it really just came down to the stress. Mm -hmm. But then again, I didn't understand because I was like, you know, I've been stressed my whole life and mm -hmm. my hair never fell out. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's what happened. So speaking of the bald spots, you said that you had about eight. 
uh, two of them are filling in nicely and you're working on the other. So how do you typically wear your hair to cover the bald spot? So I do the side part because I have, I had two in the front, mm -hmm. right on my hairline. Um, and they were very noticeable. One of them filled in, but the second one I'm working on it, like it's half filled in. Mm -hmm. um, so I use hair fibers mm -hmm. um, to cover the bald spots. Um, I do like a dark hair fiber mm -hmm. based on my hair color. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do the side parts. I also don't really wear my hair in high ponytails because it's like all the way on the bottom mm -hmm. part of my head. Like it looks like I kind of like shaved like half of my head, <laughs> which is like a good and bad thing because I could be like, oh, it looks like a, it's just a design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, and then do you personally know anyone else that has alopecia? And what advice would you give to anyone that has alopecia? I do not know anyone else who has alopecia. I know people that have like hair, like hair thinning from like postpartum, but I do not know anyone with alopecia. But for advice, I would say just go with the flow and just trust the process that, you know, it will grow back as long as you are following a regimen. Mm -hmm. Follow one hair routine, use one product that works for you. Not every product works for everyone. Just find whatever works for you and stick to it and be consistent because I see that, you know, consistency is key mm -hmm. and going to your dermatologist and consulting with a dermatologist was what helped me with my alopecia. And it's been about a year and three months that I've been suffering with alopecia and it has not grown back in fully, but I do believe that it will. Mm -hmm. and I do see the the growth so that is what keeps me pushing awesome so let's talk about it so you said that prior to having alopecia you had everyone knew you for having like beautiful hair um so have you always had long hair yes i've always had long hair since i was little um that has been like i would say my best feature mm -hmm. like if you was like i remember when i was little and, and then on Facebook, we would say, oh, what's your best feature? And everyone would just say, oh, your hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that probably made it like just a little bit harder, right? <laughs> Um, when you started to be, when you began to suffer with the alopecia because it's like yeah. that's the one thing that was like this is yeah. mine this is what I was blessed with right yeah and then I've always done like a lot of different hairstyles I've always played a lot with my hair so it was just very disappointing when I couldn't play with my hair as much before um, as I did before mm -hmm. and I had to do these protective hairstyles and I've never really had to do much with my hair mm -hmm. I just do my I wash it <laughs> every week and sometimes I blow dry sometimes I leave it wet or mm -hmm. Or, you know I put my hair my hair oil in my my mask mm -hmm. but I never had like an extensive like routine. hair routine mm -hmm. like I know like the curly hair girls and I do have curly like wavy hair mm -hmm. but I've never had to like struggle with it I know the curly hair girls that they're always like oh I have to prep and I have to wash and mm -hmm. I have to do all these things I'm like no like my hair is just it's pretty easy for mm -hmm. me to work with yeah so basically you already touched on this is it difficult maintaining your hair <laughs> since it's so long no not really <laughs> um, my hair kind of just goes wherever I put it. <laughs> I, that's like the best I could um, explain it. I, I would say like when it is um, curly, um, mm -hmm. it is a little harder to maintain. Mm -hmm. But I'm just lazy and I just put a bun on or a ponytail. I do a little braid or something. Um, my hair usually just like it tames itself with some water. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not like big on like products anyway. What's your go-to hairstyle before alopecia and then now? My go-to? before was a bun mm -hmm. <laughs> like I said I'm very lazy I would put a bun on and, like to the top and just you know go to work go wherever and my baby hairs and then after alopecia the side part like this I never do a middle part anymore because my bald spot is like right in the middle of my my head mm -hmm. that's what I do now I just do the side part or I do like a low ponytail a low bun um, I just recently started getting like comfortable with showing a little bit of it mm -hmm. so like as the, the months go by like my bun is just starting to get higher and higher mm. <laughs> and then eventually it'll get you know it'll be to the top yep. and then I'll just show it off without <laughs> it. <laughs> now let's get into some hot seat questions would you ever cut your hair yes I've cut it so many times and it just grows right back. How short? How short I've have you gone? I've cut it to my, to my shoulders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the shortest I've cut it. And why do you typically, uh, when you when you do cut your hair, why do you cut it? Because it's so heavy. Yeah. Um, I have so much hair <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's hard to maintain. And it's also like when you're doing hairstyles and curling it and, 
you know, just different hairstyles. Like, your arm gets tired. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, my arm gets tired. So, you know, sometimes it gets too hot for my hair. So I just do some layers so that the curls could bounce. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that when my hair is, like, straight, like, all the way down, mm -hmm. um, it tends to, like, just drop. Mm -hmm. The curls drop, and it doesn't get, like, as curly as mm -hmm. it is when it's in layers. Okay. And then... What's the longest you've ever gone without washing your hair? I would say two weeks. Two weeks? Wow, God. <laughs> During COVID, <laughs> back in 2020, COVID, literally, like my birthday was March 10th, and I think the world shut down like on the 13th. And yeah. I think I went eight to 10 weeks. I did have in a protective style, that's why. I think I went a good eight to 10 weeks. Um, I had braids without washing my hair. And I finally took out the braids right when I found someone whose house I could go to to get my hair done because I was like this is ridiculous someone has to do my hair and I forgot to detangle right so you guys should always detangle your hair with the wide tooth comb after you take out braids I didn't do that I went to wash my hair and I had dreadlocks <laughs> because all of you naturally shed hair every single day 50 to 150 strands and all of that hair was mixed in with my new growth and my hair just locked up I spent a good three to five business days trying to unlock my hair wow. with a little fine tooth comb. <laughs> yes. So guys don't do that. And um, so yes, typically we always recommend that yeah. everyone washes their hair every one to two weeks. If you have in a protective style for more than a month, like braids, whatever it is, you should still wash your hair because you're really just trying to cleanse your scalp. So that, that way your hair can accept new nutrients. What's a hair trend that you like and what's a hair trend that should have never existed? Hair trend that I like? I like the box braids. I can't do it because of my alopecia mm -hmm. anymore. <laughs> but I literally love the box braids. One that I think that should never existed. I don't think that it shouldn't have existed, but I think it shouldn't have. I feel, I feel like people overdid it. The, mm -hmm. the Cole array, um braids. Oh, like, <laughs> I definitely I like had those. <laughs> I liked it. I thought they were cute, but uh -huh. I just feel like people just overdid it. I'm like, all right, <laughs> everybody looks the same. <laughs> I agree. I agree. For me, um, a hair trend that I like, I love the boho knotless braid with human hair. All right. A trend that I feel that should have never existed. I never liked, I think you call it like a mullet when people shave off the sides and they have the middle. Oh, that's, that was like, what, like 2016, yeah, 2017? A oh, a mohawk. A I'm mohawk. sorry. Yeah, guys. I mean, I guess for me, um, I have a big forehead. So <laughs> most styles are just not for me. Um, and that is definitely one of them. <laughs> I agree. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> And what's a hairstyle that you haven't tried, but you want to try? I haven't tried many hairstyles, so I'm very open right now. <laughs> Have you ever had highlights or anything like that? Yes, I've had highlights, like the side, um, like, you know, when you put the side color when I was like in middle school uh -huh, or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I had that. I had like the bottom like dyed or whatever. But yeah, I'm pretty open. I just went and shaved like my head. And what's a hairstyle that you had before that you regret getting? I regret dyeing my hair blonde because it, it did a lot of damage to my hair. It was like very crunchy and it took me a while like to go natural and just you know get it back to where it was going it was before. Mm -hmm. I agree. So a hairstyle that I regret getting are Faux locks. I know that they're still, the popularity has died down a bit. If you do get faux locks, please do not try to take them out yourselves. Yeah. I literally chopped straight through with the scissors, straight through the locks, had a big piece of hair that was up to here. And I hear that same story from everyone. That they're like very difficult to take out. So if you get them put in, make sure whoever put them in takes them out for you. What's a product um, in our current line of products that you haven't tried, but would love to try? I would like to try the eyebrow and lash serum. Um, I do have a, like a little bit of a gap mm -hmm. in my eyebrow that I would like to fill in and, you know, grow my lashes so that I, way I don't have to fill, fill them in and do my lashes every time. What is a product that you would like to see us add to our line in the future? A leave-in conditioner? We don't. Um, so that's one thing customers have been asking a lot for um, is a leave-in conditioner. So we have the hydrated mist, which is like a leave-in spray that could be used after washing. And we have regular conditioner and deep conditioner, but we don't have a leave-in. So that means we have to work on that, guys. Because <laughs> yeah. um, leave-in conditioner is something that I use very often, mm -hmm. um, almost every day, um, especially when I have, like, my natural hair out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We'll keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, guys. It's been amazing. And today we spoke about Ravi's journey with alopecia areata. We hope that you guys enjoyed 
please comment down below. Have you or anyone that you know suffered with any form of alopecia? If so, tell us about your journey. Have you been dealing with it for a while? Have you overcome it? And if you know anyone that is currently suffering, looking for answers, or just looking for someone that has experienced alopecia before, please be sure to tag them below. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow, and tell us who do you like to see on the podcast next. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs>